Water's normally used to put out fires, so it's definitely a little weird to think about using it to start one. In general, to start a fire, we just need to reach the ignition temperature of our fuel, and there are a lot of ways to do this. We normally use a match or a lighter, but we could also use hot air, or in this case, hot steam. Once we reach the right temperature though, the fire will start and it doesn't really matter how we got there. So to do this demonstration, it's pretty simple and everything that's needed is shown here. On the left, we have our steam generator and below it is a hot plate and on the right, we have just a general purpose blowtorch. To make the steam generator, it's really simple. All we need is a flask, a stopper with a hole in it and a little bit of copper tubing. Once we turn on the hot plate and we start to boil the water, we start to generate steam and we get a nice flow out of the copper tubing. If you look at the copper tubing, you'll notice that it's crimped a little in the middle, and this is to slow down the flow of steam. Our goal is to heat up the steam using our blowtorch, but if it's moving too quickly, we won't be able to heat it up enough. When we look at the end of the copper tubing, we see we have a nice flow, but what we're seeing is actually not steam, it's water vapor. Steam itself is invisible and it's above 100 C, but the water vapor that we're seeing is below 100 C. The moment steam is generated from water, it cools down when it touches air. As it cools down, it recondenses and forms extremely small dispersed water droplets. The small dispersed water droplets are in suspension in air, and it's like fog or mist. So as long as we can see what's coming out of the front of the tubing, we know that it's mostly water vapor and not steam. Water vapor is not hot enough to start a fire, so we're going to have to use our torch to start heating things up. We turn on the torch and we start heating the copper tubing, and we can see that the amount of water vapor generated starts to decrease. Eventually, we'll know we've heated it enough when we see nothing coming out of the front of the tubing. This will mean that we're generating mostly hot steam and very little water vapor, and if we're lucky, this should be enough to start a fire. So when I'm ready, I hold a match in front of it, and sure enough, it ignites. It's important when this is done that the match is held using a pair of tweezers, because if we use our fingers, we could easily burn it on the very hot steam. If we want the match to stay lit, we have to pull it out of the steam right when it ignites. Using a digital thermometer, I tested the temperature of the steam that was coming out. I was honestly a little surprised because I was expecting to be somewhere like 200 C, when in reality it was between 350 and 400 C. The match head is able to ignite because it contains its own chemical supply of oxygen, but the paper part of the match doesn't have this. If we keep it inside the jet of steam, it's going to be snuffed out because there's no oxygen. I want to be very clear though when I say this, that this is not the normal way that water, water vapor, or steam would put out a fire. Normally they put out fire by removing heat, and blocking oxygen is a minor and nearly insignificant part of it. This is just a very special case because we have a very small fire and a strong jet of concentrated steam. If you want to know more about how water puts out fire in general, I made a video about this on my other channel Nile Red, and I'll provide a link to it in the description. Here I just wanted to test and see how close the match could get before it ignited. I wasn't able to pull it out before the steam snuffed the fire, but it got about a centimeter away. Anyway, just as a final demonstration, I put up a white piece of paper in front. You can see that the steam is actually able to charred a little bit and turn it brown. This usually happens to things like paper when they're heated up enough to their ignition temperature, but the environment is very low in oxygen. When the oxygen is too low, it can't sustain full-on combustion, but it can lead to smoldering. If the smoldering material then comes in contact with an oxygen supply, it could lead to full-on combustion. Anyway, just as a quick conclusion, the purpose of this video is to show just how important temperature is for starting a fire. In most cases, it doesn't matter what medium or method you use, as long as you get to the ignition temperature of the substance, you can initiate combustion. Anyway, that's all I really have to say for now. If you guys have any suggestions for future Everyday Science videos, please let me know in the comments.